Hello guys, uh, alright so we just got here in Seoul and today we have an amazing opportunity to meet and talk uh, with Dayeon, she's the head of Autism Partnership here in Korea, so follow us so we can know their story here. Thank you. So we're here in Korea at the Autism Partnership, uh, Korea. Uh, we, anyway, so we came here to, to talk and understand all the work that's been done with kids here in Seoul. Uh, Daung uh, was the one that I, I've been communicating with for the past two months, most. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> trying to set up the schedule. Uh, but anyway, so thank you very much. I uh, appreciate uh, having us here. Uh, anyways, I just want to hear about your organization, how it started. Well, actually, um, our head office is in LA, uh, yes. in California, and we have uh, international offices in Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, in Korea, Manila. Um, I think we have like 11. Yeah, um, a lot of offices. Um, Korea, we started um, providing service in 2013, and that's when I began working here with Autism Partnership 2. Um, and uh, for about two, three years, we uh, only provided home-based service because we didn't have any center, mm -hmm. um, right? And then um, we started with our new center um, in 2016, and yes, we just moved to our new center, which is a um, really good thing. Kids are enjoying the new environment, and you guys loved it. Yeah, that's amazing. So <laughs> How do you work with the government? There's no insurance um, really? policy or any any government support at all, um, as far as I know. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, we have a few uh, foreign families here, and they do get some insurance support mm -hmm. from their government, which is really good. I mean, yeah, but well, well, all of our so the Korean government, there's no services and anything like that. How do Korean people see? Autism. I'm sure these days the stigma is less, uh, but still, uh, parents are very scared to talk really? about it, yes, um, and many of the parents that I do consultations with, they are still in, in denial, um, they're very sad. They usually go to, uh, the, go to see a doctor um, to get a diagnosis, okay. and then after after the diagnosis, uh, that's when the parents usually contact us. Those doctors say that uh, they do need intensive therapy. Mm -hmm. These days, doctors recommend um, a intensive ABA services more. That Which you do it here, right, okay? Right. Our center, like I told you, we provide 35 hour a week intensive service. Um, I think that's like uh, we don't help have a lot of mm -hmm. centers that provide intensive service. Okay. And if a kid with a long income family, what should they do about that? Is there is there a place they can take or here it's pretty much kind of like Brazil where either you have money to take them to the clinic or you, it's you're kind of like out of luck. Is it kind of how it is here in Korea a little bit? I, you would I'm say? afraid so, yes. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, so the kids come here for 30 hours, you said 35 hours a week. Okay. Until they are seven years old, you said? Right. Um, until they go to elementary school. So that's the law. They have to go. And then after that, what happens? Well, actually, we face that issue lately a lot. Um, our kids are growing and they're, I mean, they're, um, they have improved a lot, but then when it comes to school placement, there are so limited options there. Um, yeah, and usually what we would like to go for is that we would uh, send um, our therapist as a shadow to school, and then as soon as they're more independent, we would fade out, but then 
um, schools in Korea usually they do not really like other outside really? agencies. Well, what's what's your background? I studied ABA and uh, and I got my master's degree. Okay. And then uh, while I was preparing for my exam, I learned about AP. At that time, we didn't have AP Korea. I learned about AP Hong Kong. So okay. I emailed my boss there okay. and then I said I wanted to work with you guys and blah 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 and then he said actually he was planning to open up a center in Korea too so okay. why don't you wait for that and I did and yeah. I started working when he oh, wow. actually So you pretty much started, got the right. whole thing started here, that's awesome. What, what would you say is the biggest challenge here in Korea? Do you see that things are moving good or? Mm. Um, wish there's more support by the government so that like um, more people could benefit um, from that and they could all have the opportunity to receive good quality service because you know we meet a lot of parents and not all the families are able to you know support buy their right. we've done like what 13 workshops last year yeah. this year and just this year, year. Three yes different she, she's been using me every <laughs> Every time we do workshop, we provide a free one-to-one -one consultation oh, wow. so that like we could uh, provide more advices and tips for parents who um, can't really receive their service or who live far away. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's an amazing job that you, you, you all do here. Uh, like we said, we really mean it. Like It's very organized, clean. It seems like you're, you have a good structure with all the aids. Uh, so uh, you know we definitely have you know very happy with that because you know from what we've seen, not a lot of places like that. To be honest with you, unfortunately. That's great. Thank you. Well, what's thanks a lot. That's pretty much it.